If you are a public school teacher, if you know a public school teacher, if you love a public school teacher, grab them, bring them to the TV because they need to know about this stuff. It's, it's information. Tim Farmer, you're with an organization called PACE. What is PACE? PACE is the Professional Association of Colorado Educators. We're a non-union professional association for teachers. Uh, essentially, a teacher can join our organization. Uh, we're much more affordable than the union first off. We're only $15 a month, whereas union dues typically run in excess of $60 a month. Uh, and the great thing about us is that teachers still get some of the important benefits they need. Uh, they get a $2 million liability insurance policy. They get legal insurance. So everything from I, I, I know a bunch yeah. of teachers, and, and they're not big fans of, of their union. But right. they say, you know, i got to be a member of the union because of liability issues. When I right. push them on that, I don't really know what that means. But they tell me you, you never know in a right. litigious society when you're going to get sued, when some kid is going to claim that, that you hit him in class or somebody is doing something. So they need that liability insurance mm -hmm. for which they pay $700 a year right. to get this liability policy. And also the union provides them with what, collective bargaining, that is they'll help, help bargain and get their, get their pay increases and all that other good stuff. So they're members of the union. Out of the 700 bucks that they're spending to be a member of the union, how much really goes to, to buying that, that insurance policy? From everything we've been able to see in the, the financial documents we've looked at, it's a couple bucks a year to cover them for the liability insurance. A um, couple of bucks a year. But I tell right. you what, let's round that up. So, so even if it's 10, 20 bucks a year right. to give them, and how much insurance do they usually have? With a it's, it's usually a two to three million dollar policy as well. However, it doesn't cover attorney's fees. Uh, really? PACE's policy does cover attorney's fees. So that's a big difference. What they get with PACE is an independent uh, individual policy. It's going to be in their name, whereas with the, the NEA, they're going to get a group policy. Uh, and in fact, so, uh, so to put, the, put this into terms even I can yeah. understand, yeah. if you're a member of the union, the reason, one of the big reasons to pay that 700 bucks is right. because you get insurance, right. and, but you're telling me that insurance doesn't cover a lawyer. So if you're getting sued, right. you're, you got to go and dig into your pocket and get, get your own lawyer. Right. You'll have now, to come out PACE, of Colorado was a professional educators, I was trying to get professional association, <laughs> Colorado educators. That's Someone it. spent a whole night trying to get a word out of, out of those words. Um, you can give them a policy for a fraction of the price right. that provides better coverage and provides legal fees. Right. Yeah. Like, basically, like you said, and, and actually, I'm a former teacher myself, uh, and I was teaching seventh grade and a bunch of rambunctious seventh graders. I wanted to have a liability policy, and I actually joined the union simply for that reason. That was the only reason I joined, uh, and I think that's the reason a lot of teachers join. Um, Obviously, as you start to find out some of the other things that the union's involved in, um, I disagreed with a lot of their policy stances. I disagreed with a lot of their political stances. And I had simply joined for insurance uh, and found out I could get it other places for a lot more, uh, a lot more affordably. Uh, and that's ultimately what PACE wants to do. We're completely non-political. We don't endorse candidates. We don't give money to candidates, political parties, campaigns. We stay completely out of that fray, and that's how we're so much more affordable. All right, so, so PACE is an alternative to being a member of, of a teacher's union. That is, if you're looking for the insurance coverage, if right. you're looking for insurance coverage that includes legal fees, right. what about the, the idea of you know, professional development, the idea that, mm -hmm. well, the union does more than just protect teachers. We, we get together and we do best practices. We help you be the best darn teacher you can be. Yeah, and as PACE has grown, we're doing more and more of that. Um, twice a year, we do a scholarship and grant cycle where teachers can apply for scholarships and grants for uh, you know, class projects and things that are going to impact kids in the classroom, taking a master's program, going to professional development conferences, a variety of things like that. Uh, and we're also starting to host more and more uh, conferences for teachers, professional development type events. Uh, as we grow and expand, those are those offerings will become and, more and, and more. And the insurance you have, you say it's an actual policy right. to the teacher. Correct. It's got their name. their name on it. Yep. It's their policy. You mm -hmm. can't take it away. It's theirs. Right. Not a bad deal. And the savings is. It's about a fourth of the cost. We're 180 a year, 15 a month, whereas the union's 800 a year, 60 a month. So you can you can save 500 dollars plus mm -hmm. by switching from a union right. to a professional association. Are there other professional associations? I know that some people can get that liability insurance through uh, their personal insurance broker and some other places too. Yeah, again, most of the policies that you would get, say, get in, getting a rider on your your home and home owner's insurance is usually not going to cover. Uh, legal fees. It'll cover your liability, so whatever the judgment eventually is against you, it'll cover that, but you'll have to come out of pocket for the actual legal fees. There's a problem. The problem is 
you come into come into town, you talk to some teachers, and the teachers go, "Oh my God, I could use five hundred dollars plus a year, mm -hmm. get more insurance, more service, and have lawyers at my disposal if I if, if I need them." Let me switch over. Let me leave the union, right. uh, and let's just sign up right now. The problem is, it ain't so easy to to uh, leave the union. What was it the Eagle right. said? Uh, Hotel California. Exactly. You, you, you're always invited in, but you may never leave. Right. Yeah, you can join the union at any time throughout the year, uh, but there's a very little known policy in most of the larger districts in Colorado that says if you want to cancel your membership, you have to do it in a two-week window in the fall, and you have to come to the union office to do it. And the union office is only open during school hours, so teachers have to take a day off school, leave their students for a day to go down just to cancel uh, their union dues. Let me see if I got this one right. Yeah. So, I want to leave the union. I just want to leave the union. You just want to cancel I can't. It. I want to say, I want to stop giving you my money. I can't. Right. I've got to wait for a window of opportunity sometime in the fall when I'm working. Right. Now, I can't just send a letter in. I just right. can't go online and, and cancel. I actually have to go down to the union hall, the union office, mm -hmm. go by the union workers mm -hmm. and fill out a form there. Right. Sometimes, and it depends on the district, every district's a little different, sometimes there's even an interview process that they put you through <laughs> what? trying to talk you into staying. I mean, it, you know, it's, it's easier to get out of your cell phone contract, as much as people hate cell phone contracts, it's easier to get out of a cell phone contract than it is to cancel your union membership. It's absurd. And the thing is, is the teachers unions they claim that their mission is to help teachers, to protect teachers, to be the voice for teachers, but then they have these policies that don't respect a teacher's right to, to choose what they want to do with their money. I thought in America we have this you know, freedom of association, which I would assume means freedom of disassociation, which is I don't want to be associated with your group any longer. Right. They go, no, you can't. You know, I'm wondering That's if exactly. the NRA works the same way. I want to leave the NRA. No, you, you got to right. come on down to Arlington, Virginia, come into our offices and sign some forms in front of all of us. And we'll give you a one-week period in order in order to do that. Right. Is this a, is this a real issue or is this just a made-up issue? If, if somebody wants to leave the union, won't they just wait the year, put it on their calendar, go down to the union hall, sit there and fight through all the other guys right. who are trying to convince them not to leave and sign the paper and go and go in peace? Well, right now that's what they're having to do, but our argument is that they shouldn't have to do that. Um, you know, if we really respect our teachers and we think that they should be able to choose how they want to spend their money on a month-to-month -month basis, then we think that that's a bad policy for teachers. Um, you know, it's, it's basically an issue where the, a large special interest has trampled the rights of the individual, and we think that uh, government has a responsibility to step in and protect the individual rights in this situation. You got a bill. Everybody's got a bill. What's your bill? House Bill 1333, uh, sponsored by Representative John Becker, whose wife's a teacher. Uh, he understands this issue very well. Uh, and basically, you know, he, he's seen, like I've seen, these poor teachers that, for whatever reason, financial hardship maybe, maybe they've, the union is doing something with which they disagree and they decide, you know what, I don't want to fund that anymore. Uh, they're being told no. Uh, it, it blows my mind that there's an organization that is doing something that you fundamentally disagree with and you want to sever right. your ties with that organization. Right. You know, if you don't like the Republican Party, you leave the Republican Party and right. you switch over to something else. If you don't like what your YMCA is doing, you leave. You don't like what your Qantas Club is doing, you leave. You don't like what your union is doing, uh, you gotta stick around a year. <laughs> exactly. You gotta keep paying me, we're gonna right. take the money out of your paycheck whether you want it to or not. Right. And then you got a little period that you can come on down here, fill out some forms, and. Then, then we'll let you yeah. go. I'm sure it's very convenient for them. You know, and the, the, the argument they put forward, well, we, we need to be able to create annual budgets and we need to be able to know what I need to create annual budgets. I would Look, love it if it, I could if I could tell the donors <laughs> exactly. to the Independence Institute, I'm sorry, you, you <laughs> can't stop donating. Exactly. We got your credit card number, we're just gonna keep pulling it out no matter what you say. Yeah, I mean, it's basically putting the interests of the union's budget above the interests of the, interests of the personal teacher's budget um, and saying that our budgeting is more important than your budgeting around the, the, the dinner table. Well, it's, it's, it's a great power play. They also have the ability to suck the money right out of paychecks. Right. And that those paychecks that come from government districts, they deduct the union dues. So right. there's, no, there's no even way to, to turn it off, off there. Right. So it's not even like, right, you're not, they're not cutting a check every month. They can't even just stop paying or call their bank and say stop paying. It's coming right out of their paycheck. And if they call a district payroll office to try and tell them no, the district payroll office is going to call the union and say, hey, can we stop this? And the union will say no. Um, so it's kind of all intertwined and intermixed together. Uh, can can people leave? Uh, now, again, you don't have a yeah. union. 
your organization is a professional organization, right. which means you don't endorse candidates, you don't Correct. endorse parties, you don't take money and, and funnel it off to a campaign, you don't, right. you don't do any of that. Is that correct? Right. Our right. vision is to elevate teaching to be an academic professional, similar to doctors or lawyers or engineers. We, we see teachers as, as academic professionals, and they should have an organization. And not assembly line workers. Exactly. Right. They should have an organization. Somebody that wants to leave way. your organization. Correct. Can they do it? Yep. Is there a window that they have to, you know, at the fall they need to come down and talk to you personally? Month to month. They pay us month to month. They can cancel month to month. We respect their decisions. We recognize people have financial situations that change, um, you know, and for a variety of reasons. Somebody just might not be able to afford even $15 a month anymore, and we respect their yeah. decision. This bill has made it through a, a House committee. Correct. And was it Representative Ramirez who went through this personally? What was that story? Because I, I heard this secondhand and I thought it was a hurt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he shared a little bit of it uh, in the committee the other what day. What was it? Uh, essentially, his wife's a teacher and she wanted to get out of uh, her NEA uh, membership and she went down to the office like, you know, she thought she was supposed to do and was told no. Uh, you can't get out. And so she was standing there kind of haggling with the people. In the meantime, Representative Ramirez walked in and they recognized him as a state representative. As a state representative. And they went back and got her the form and said, oh, just sign right here. Uh, and, and he goes on to say, well, that's fine, but the problem is I can't be married to every woman in the state that wants to get out of the teachers union. And so we need to have a better policy at the state it's level. not a bad idea. It could be yeah. a sideline business that if you <laughs> marry a state legislator, right. they can get you out of your union contract because it'll, you know, you you'll right. get some respect. But if you're not married to a state representative or a state senator, you, you can't get out of your contract. You know, it's, it, it really, it just highlights the fact this is a bad policy. You know, it's, it's something that it, it disrespects teachers. It disrespects their right to choose and their ability to decide what they want to do month to month. And uh, personally, I think it's, it's the responsibility and duty of state government to step in in this kind of situation and say, you know what, this is a bad policy. It's hurting our teachers. We're going to get rid of it. Harder than a cell phone contract. I like that. As far as I can tell. tell, me, tell how many people are members of the association, your association? So nationally, we have thousands of members, uh, members in all 50 states. We're a member of Association of American Educators. It's our national partner. Uh, here in Colorado, we're relatively new. Uh, we're approaching 1,000 members, and we grow exponentially every year. 1,000 so. members. Now, I, there's about 50,000 or so teachers, right? Mm -hmm. So actually, you, you've started to have a, a pretty sizable impact that, at this point, at least 2% of all teachers Mm -hmm. Our members of, yeah. of an of a alternative association, not having right. to pay any union dues, not having to get involved in partisan fights, just get the liability insurance and mm -hmm. and be part of, a, of of the team. Yeah, and we're our our growth is really exponential. I mean, we should we should be approaching two thousand members very shortly. I mean, the 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 way that we've been growing. And the other thing to note is that we. Um, face a lot of opposition simply getting our message out to teachers. There's a lot of districts that won't let us come to new teacher orientations where the union gets to go and do a presentation to new teachers. There's, they won't let us come to faculty meetings. They won't let us in the building to distribute literature. So we're basically shut out completely. People want to get information. They want to, the teacher wants more information about PACE. Where do they go? ColoradoTeachers.org. ColoradoTeachers.org. Let me put forward my uh, prediction. It'll pass the House. The Senate's going to kill it. And in the meantime, listen for me on K. Howe on Sunday afternoons. Tell a friend about the Independence Institute. We'll see you next week.